Uh, we have here, uh, to my left, Kendra Haven's going to be talking about all about writing beautiful code faster. How are you, Kendra? I'm doing good. How are you, Seth? Fantastic. Now, for those that are watching, make sure you uh, send in your questions because we'll have a little wrap at the end, okay? Definitely. All right, let's turn it over to you, my friend. Okay, so welcome to Write Beautiful Code Faster with uh, Kendra Havens. Yeah, that's the title they made me use. Good stuff. <laughs> um, so first off, I really want to talk all about the .NET productivity improvements in Visual Studio 2019. A ton of those start with UX and shell. So first off, side-by-side -side installation. I know many of you might not be totally ready to make the jump switch entirely to 2019, and that is absolutely OK. Because with the Visual Studio installer, you can have multiple versions of Visual Studio 2017 right next to 2019, both installed on your machine. You can switch back to 2017 if you run into any issues and use 2019 for all of the projects that, um, yeah, that you absolutely can. Uh, okay, so as soon as I open it up, you might see, notice the difference. I'm in the blue theme. It's a little bit more purpley, as I like to describe it. Um, Amanda was just talking about some of the UI changes you might see. Um, one of the biggest, most useful productivity tips I want to call out is control Q search. So uh, we had this in 2017. It was actually off to the right just a little bit. We've centered it, so it's, and we've indexed way, way more in it, and we've enabled this fudgy uh, fuzzy searching. So let's say I'm trying to uh, open up the start window and I can misspell it as star widow and uh, I can actually still go ahead and launch it. So um, Pratik was just talking about um, getting to code really quickly. Um, so we have kind of simplified the experience uh, and you can still see all of your most recent files uh, and that's what I definitely use the most. Uh, more things that you can do is like adding items from control Q, uh, as well as always uh, looking up different code style options that you may have. So I'll be using this a ton throughout the rest of uh, my demos. Um, so a major thing that we wanted to, speaking of it, add, speaking of getting to code fast, is uh, we have enabled a way to load solution filters. So let's say you're working on a project you're working on a subset of code, you don't want to load the entire solution, only a few projects, you can actually unload certain projects in your solution. So I've unloaded my test, right click on the solution file and save it as a solution filter. And I have one saved already that I can go ahead and open up. So I, it saves as a .slnf file. And when I click on it, it only uh, loads the projects that were loaded when I saved that solution filter. So that is a huge deal for enterprises with hundreds, maybe even thousands of projects in one solution. We're not here to judge uh, your architecture decisions for sure. Um, <laughs> so it's a great way to uh, open code really quickly. Really excited about solution filters. Um, I think uh, Amanda just called this out in the Q&A, but you might notice that these code lens uh, references are now showing up in uh, c the community. So um, you can yeah, get references, you can get your um, Git history, you can show like authors and recent changes. Code lens is super useful. It's su a super good um, just a uh, prompt for, for learning a little bit more about your methods and the code that you're working in and helping you learn more context. So you can edit what code lenses appear on your solution. All I did was um, in control Q search, I typed in code lens and I have everything enabled because I want to know as much as possible. Okay, so and that is in community, so yay. Um, another thing that is new in Visual Studio 2019, which is a huge reason to upgrade, is per monitor awareness. So it used to be when you launched Visual Studio on your laptop, laptop and you dragged it to another monitor um, because you're living that blessed multi-monitor lifestyle. Um, Visual Studio wouldn't always resize correctly. So now we're much more smart about um, adjusting fonts for high resolution, which is absolutely wonderful. Okay, so next off, all of the tooling improvements we have in Visual Studio 2019. So first off, new classification colors. 
um, you will notice your editor is much more colorful. So keywords, uh, and I just mentioned this in the keynote, so I'll recap just a little bit. Keywords, user methods, local variable names, parameter names, and overloaded operators are all getting new colorization. And you can actually customize these colors if you don't love the ones that we chose for you. So I'll go ahead and go to fonts and colors. And again, I just use control Q search. I didn't need to go through environment and find fonts and colors and all of that. And uh, if I scroll down to user members, there's my properties um, and locals and um, constants and all of that I can adjust myself. Um, speaking of weird hot dog themes, <laughs> no, uh, as we were developing this, a lot of people were excited to see um, uh, statics were bolded in some of our first iterations. We got a lot of pushback because it was just jumping out to too many people. I was definitely one of the people where I was like, whoa, statics, why are you yelling at me? Um, so, but if you really did love that, you can still enable to be a platform and not make all of your decisions for you. So, um, yeah, that's a new one. Uh, so, Allison will be mentioning even more about IntelliCode. You've seen a lot of IntelliCode excitement so far in the keynotes. Um, I can totally uh, use IntelliCode all over my project. Um, it's an extension. We're hoping it will soon be on by default at some point, but uh, you can go and grab it at aka.ms slash IntelliCode. That'll bring you to this page. It works for multiple languages, as Allison mentioned. Um, and it offers smarter completion uh, for dot completion, smarter overload suggestions, uh, and it learns from your context, which is super helpful. It even indexes things that like Newtonsoft.json is not a Microsoft library. It's a super popular NuGet package in the community. Um, it still learns what suggestions are most popular in certain situations. So we still have Decentralized Object being offered here. So super excited about IntelliCode. Another thing I'm really excited about tooling is, oh, I'll go ahead and reload my test project, is for SDK style projects, so using um, so .NET Core um, projects or um, .NET Framework adapted to the SDK style, you can simply double click on that project in the solution explorer and it opens the CS, CS project immediately. We are so far away from the good old days of um, having to right click and unload and edit your CS project. Whew, just a simple double click. Awesome editing experience for CS project. Um, it is all about the little things, trying to make uh, your experience better. Uh, another thing about the CS project is uh, you can now find CS projects in uh, Go to All Navigation. So I can type Go uh, Control T, and that's how I can get to files members, recent files, um, or my particular favorite navigation. Um, and now we also index CS projects. So any files within those, um, we even show a preview. Uh, so if I closed out of that, and I think retype here, it will so show CS project in your little preview window without fully opening the file. Pretty sweet. Okay, so speaking of being able to uh, find code quickly, um, we added a new category into our find all references. So um, I, that's shift F11, or you can right click and find all references. We added this kind of category, category that categorizes references by um, the reference type. So read, write, name only. Um, and you can actually filter all of these to, for example, only the right references. So you can see everywhere that this particular variable is being written to, which is very helpful. Super, super big ask and totally new in 2019. Um, and I am excited to show off the uh, search local and watch windows during debugging, but I'm actually going to leave that for Leslie that has a talk um, later in the day. So stay tuned for more debugging features. Really excited about that. Okay, so I mentioned um, in the keynote a little bit about code style and management. So let's dig into that a little bit further. So um, many of you may be familiar with uh, adjusting code style through your tools options. So you can scroll around, you can set your prior, ref pr 
preferences to um, prefer var or explicit type. And uh, you can set the severity of this as well. So something new in 2019 is being able to generate your editor config file from these settings. So I have one generated here. Um, and this is where I can manage all of these settings. So if I went and looked up my var rules, I can say that right now it's um, actually preferring the explicit type because it's set to false. Um, and I can go ahead and change it to a suggestion and we can see it impact my code. So here I'm using var in my test project. Um, I can go ahead and select all matching using shift alt dot and change that to a suggestion. That's multi-cursor, by the way. Um, if any of you were like, oh yeah, shift alt click or shift alt dot to um, insert at the next matching. Very cool. So now when I go here, I am now getting these dots underneath my var. So the code fix for this is um, going and changing it to explicit type. But let's say I want to do this for my entire file. And I want to go ahead and fix some of my inconsistent spacing. I have curly braces sometimes on the first line, sometimes the second. I want to apply all of my, ref my formatting fixes and my code fixes all at once. I can do that using code cleanup. So we added this little broom icon to the bottom of files. So I can click it to execute code, code cleanup, which is Control uh, K, Control E, or I can go and configure code cleanup. And here I can actually specify what fixers I want code cleanup to apply. So here I can apply implicit explicit type preferences. So I promoted that to be associated with uh, my code cleanup profile. So this is just deciding what fixers exactly are associated with uh, a certain keyboard command. So if I apply Control ke it fixes all of my spacing and it changed uh, my vars into explicit types. Cool. And uh, another thing I want to call out is, so we have a lot of asks for code cleanup to be able to work on your entire solution. We are working on that. We also have a lot of asks to have code cleanup somehow work on the command line so people might be able to check it into CICD. Um, right now, we do have a .NET format global tool that will apply formatting options. So not all code style fixers, um, more like white space fixers. Um, the curly braces would be a good example of that or um, having space in between um, the parentheses of a parameter or of a method. Um, you can hook up the .NET format global tool right now to your CI/CD pipeline. So it'll do some formatting, not all code style. We're still developing the area and we're really open to feedback on it. Cool. So next I'll move on to .NET refactorings and code fixes. So I have a ton to get through. Um, let's see how fast I can go. <laughs> so first up is sync namespace and folder name. So a lot of people have been really excited um, in requesting that one. So if I went ahead and dragged my emoji test.cs to my home controller, um, so I just changed its containing folder name, right? If I now go to my namespace and hit control dot, which is the trusty uh, keyboard shortcut for accessing all of your tooltips and light bulb suggestions uh, for wherever your cursor is. Um, I will get the suggestion to change my namespace to my folder name. Boom, so now it's in the home controller namespace. And this will also change all of the references um, to this namespace and update all of them as you would uh, sort of expect. Okay, so in the keynote, I was super glad they got this in. Uh, we have convert for each to link. So you have um, the link query body, or you could also use the link uh, method syntax or the call form. So it's all in one line using a lambda. Very nice. Um, we can invert conditionals. Uh, so right here, oh, I can tell you what this app does. And actually, I can go ahead and run it. Um, so this app grabs all of your tweets that you're currently uh, making on Twitter 
and uh, it runs it through Azure Cognitive Services to get the sentiment score. And uh, when I click Analyze here, it will give me back the scores along with the tweets. We also have this ability to analyze the average, so it kind of totals the average sentiment for each user. Just pretty nice little code. Um, tweets are very important to me, obviously. Um, so here is where we gauge whether or not the tweet sentiment score qualifies as happy, sad, or indifferent. So um, I have some conditional operators here, and maybe I want to, this to read happy, indifferent, and then sad. I can go ahead and hit control dot um, after I place my cursor right next to a logical operator, and it will invert that condition. So it didn't actually change the meaning of my code. Um, scores that are still less than 0.3, we would qualify as sad, um, and above that was indifferent. Um, so it just changed the way the code is written. So nice little refactoring to have. Okay, another ask that we uh, was very popular was being able to not only extract your interface, but extract your interface to the current file. So um, I can access this by hitting, putting, just placing my cursor in any class, and I can hit extract interface, it opens this little dialog, and now I have an iEmoji search interface, um, and emoji search is implementing it. But what if I meant to add more members and to that interface? What if I added some to um, my type and I actually want to promote them so I can use them in other places this interface is inherited? Um, I can do that with uh, pull members up. So I place my cursor in any of the members and I can pull members up to a base type. So it reopens that dialog and I can go ahead and select all the members and I can pull them up to my interface. So handy dandy little uh, refactorings uh, that we offer now. Okay, so here I have a super long list of parameters, right? It goes all the way off the page. I'm uh, looking at multiple different emojis. A uh, new refactoring we're offering is wrap indent every parameter. So I can do that here and now I can actually read not only my list of string but my string text. So pretty helpful there. Um, okay, and let's say that this is another very popular refactoring. Um, I'm trying to type out a function that I know I have the dependency installed in my project, but I just don't have the using statement. So here I'm trying to call newtonsoft.json. I get an actual code fix to add the missing using. So I can add using uh, newtonsoft.json, pop that at the top of my project, and now I can get all of the IntelliSense that I actually wanted for it. Cool. And um, let's see. So going back to my emoji search class, I wanted to call out that the regex I have here, you may notice it's getting some colorization. That's because we added regex language support in Visual Studio 2019. You even have brace completion in some uh, or sorry, brace detection in some uh, error messages. And um, it can, so it can sense when you're missing something or you mistype something, because let's be real, uh, typing regex is hard enough, so we're trying to make that a lot easier for you. Um, you may notice I'm getting some warning text here. So I never actually use this variable, and I'm also reassigning it in some place. So I'm getting two different um, code fixes here. One is to remove the redundant assignment. So that's what I'm getting um, dots on. So when I take that, it eliminates one assignment that I never used in my code. And the warning is for because I never actually used this variable at all. So now we have dead code analysis that will actually see um, what variables you aren't using and what you can erase. So this will definitely help you clean up your code. All right, so that's not even all of our code fixes and refactorings. There's definitely way more that I wanted to show off. Um, you can find the complete list in um, our release notes, uh, as, along with our blog posts as well. We have another one coming out today. Should be really great. Um, so yeah, 
Q and A. <laughs> Are you ready for me, Seth? Let's do it. Man. Okay. I love, love Q and A. Hold on, they're gonna probably get my mic ready. There we go. I can start to hear stuff. There you so, go. So here's the thing that I love about uh, Visual Studio is how productive I am with just autocomplete. If you could summarize like the top three things that 2019 years, like you should totally look at this because oh, there, I feel like there's so many hidden things like the editor config stuff you were doing, some of that stuff when you went into like deep into the menu system, I was like, right. I've never heard of that. Like what are the top three things that people should look at? Okay, first off, I really love IntelliCode. <laughs> I won't stop talking about it. It's totally Allison's thing. She'll talk about it more later. Yeah. Um, but that smarter completion is so key. We ran in over 2,000 open source GitHub repos in order to train this AI model. It's super cool. Um, yeah, so I'm just like, my mind is kind of boggled. Um, I started in what, like 2014 was right. my first internship. Mm -hmm. I did not know computers would making be, be making my coding experience so much better at this yeah. time. And, and you know, I've been doing like just autocomplete for so long that now seeing it being even smarter to me is super cool. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we want to make sure to get your questions in. So I'm going to get them right here as I as I get them. Uh, here's one from Mike. Great VS 2019 presentation. Where can I find the code to your Twitter sentiment analysis you showed during your presentation? Care to share? Sure. Um, some of the emoji search classes and that kind of stuff I added myself, but um, generally there's a great tutorial on Twitter sentiment analysis um, that you can find um, in our Azure docs. I'll try to figure out the link for it and tweet it. Awesome. We'll make sure to put it out there for you. Uh, from Travis, uh, oh, I know Travis. For oh, code hey, Travis. cleanup, how do you <laughs> configure it to run Roslyn Analyzer fixes like those found in StyleCop? Would love to have one click member reordering and spacing fixes. Sure. Um, so a lot of the style cop analyzers we have implemented in our Roslyn analyzers repo. Um, so this is a repository separate from what ships with the compiler um, because it offers a lot more suggestions um, than we want to have on by default. But if you want to go and grab that NuGet package, I think you'll get a lot of uh, what you would normally see in style cop. Awesome. Not 100%, okay. but a lot of them. Okay, so uh, yeah. enough of them, right? <laughs> Let <So> us know. <laughs> can, you, can you show me one more time because they something happened with audio when I was outside. I want to see the menu where you were changing a lot of the coloring. Can you show that? Because I, oh, I want to yeah. be able to get to that again when I go back. So let's go to our screen if we sure. can. So it's super easy to open. You use control Q and just type in fonts, right? See, like that's the part I missed because the thing is, you gotta I gotta use search. Yeah, and, and I this is the problem that I have. Like I saw, I, I was walking by because I'm gonna be honest with everybody. I went to actually grab a donut, but don't tell anybody. Okay, it's I our won't. secret. But I saw you were in this menu changing very specific things, and you can see it on your screen right now. If we go to the screen, and I always like I have a hard time like finding the right thing. Why don't you like impress upon me because I I need like the impression here stuck in my head. What kinds of things can you search for when you're doing search? Um, so all of our uh, menu commands used to be the only things accessible through search. And now we have things like adding certain NuGet packages or adding like a project new file in search as well, as well as a ton of stuff in tools options. And not everything in tools options is there. Um, it depends on yeah how we tag it when we sure. check in, but we're trying to add more and more. And if there's something that was really difficult to find, please let us know. Yeah, absolutely. You can let us know. Actually, I'll go ahead and call out this little guy at the top that Amanda was talking about. This is our little report a problem guy, and um, it'll take you to Visual Studio um, developer community, and uh, you can go ahead and report a problem there, or suggest a feature, and we will absolutely go through it. Awesome. And I think I think the challenge that I have is I'm stuck like in in this stage of Visual Studio where <laughs> like when I search for things, I'm like, I'm searching for things in a file. But that's not what search is nowadays, right? No, it's search yeah. for all sorts of things. Tools options, commands, NuGet packages. It's super useful. Control Q. Yes. Okay. So here is a question uh, I think from David. When you use solution filters and do a rebuild all, what gets built? Just the filtered projects or all of them? Do you know that one? Yes, just the filtered projects. Okay, cool. So you will still have issues if you have unloaded dependencies and whatnot. But if you don't have any, if you, all of the dependencies are loaded, it'll build just fine. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, we okay. figured that out at the MVP Summit when I didn't know, so we tried it out. <laughs> He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that one out. It's the same. Like We all do the same thing, okay? From Jens, 
When you show new features, could you also state if they are in community? So all the stuff that you were showing, which part is in community and which part isn't? Do you know? Yeah, the biggest thing to call out, uh, everything? Yeah, everything I just showed was in community. So all the code fixes and refactorings and stuff, automatically in. Code Lens is now in community, Ooh, which we're really excited about. Hey, that's um, cool. Yeah, uh, editing project files, yeah, everything is just in there. What I want to do now is we have a couple of minutes, and then as your questions come in, I want to make sure that we call out some people. Here's some people in Boston that are here yeah. that are watching. Look at look how cool they are. Thanks, Jim, for that. Hi, Jim. I, and I wanted to do a little. I wanted to do a little inception here. Mind blown. Hold on, let me let me line it up. This is cool. I mean. <laughs> Can someone tweet a picture of this? Yeah, let, let me, let me get in there so you can, you can be ready. I'm going to get the exact, okay. All right, so they probably got it already. Good. Good. Okay, uh, another couple of people. We have uh, people here in Minneapolis from Mike. I know Mike, he's nice. Look at them. This, they're all watching. And then we had someone from more far, oh, here we are, uh, from Denmark. The, you can see they're in the evening hour over there. Okay, a couple of other questions. When we talk about uh, Visual Studio uh, IntelliCode, they talked a little earlier about training a model. Can you show us where someone would do that? Is that, is that you? They're, that, they're doing that next, right? Is yeah, that, okay. yeah. Allison will be yeah. doing that they're, right they're after like, me. They're like over here. Which is good because I'm not sure. Okay. I don't have a good right. <laughs> You got me. From Andre, <laughs> when adding a new file with search control Q, is there an easy way to tell the folder that I want the new file to be created in? Oh, I should just, I should make it big from Andre. Search control Q. So you can make it. You can add new files with Control Search Control Q. Uh, it opens up the regular Add File dialog. Okay. So the same sort of input that. Let's see if I can add new item. Yeah. So it just opens up sort of the same um, page that you would see. And when I hit Add. Ah, so it learns, oh, that's right, Control Q actually is contextual for what you have selected versus like in the Solution Explorer or in your editor, which is also really trippy. I see. <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. It's like knowing. What are, we're not even going to be able to code anymore if you people have your way. I'm just saying. <laughs> right? Yeah, Shoot. absolutely. That'll be really cool. So you're, you're saying that it opens based upon context. So if someone mm -hmm. was very helpful. Let's do it. Let's yes. do a third one here if we can. <laughs> Uh, just because we have another minute, let me get in there here. Uh, just okay. All right. So uh, oh, I love the internet. Uh, thank you so <laughs> <It's> much. <great. laughs> all right. So hold on. Uh, thank you, Kendra. We're we're all done. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. We're gonna get this recorded and put up.